Hi, I'm Chris. Welcome to Digital Power Trip. Today we're going to be installing RetroPie on top of the Ubuntu operating system. We're doing this so that we can play some of those great retro games that we remember from our younger days. So let's get started. First thing you're going to want to do is go to Ubuntu's website and click on download and choose desktop. Once you're there, click download. You can donate from this if you would like, um, but for our demonstration purposes and since I've donated before, I think we will skip that for today and just click download. That'll get our download started and once it's uh, finished over here, we'll move on to the next step. And we're going to be able to burn our image to a flash drive that we'll utilize inside of a laptop to build out our system. So um, just download Etcher at etcher.io. I'll leave links for all this stuff in the description of the video. And Etcher is almost done downloading there. So that's finished. Okay, so now that we have Ubuntu downloaded and we have Etcher downloaded and Etcher I installed it in the background while we weren't looking and now I'm going to bring up uh, and run it this is what it looks like first it tells us to select our image you can do that one of two ways you can click that button and I also believe that you can drag the image there. Once you get that done, you select the drive you want to burn it to. Okay, I have it selected and then all it's left to do is hit flash and when we flash it, it's going to install a bootable ISO onto this USB thumb drive and we'll be able to take it over and install it on the laptop. Okay, now that we have our USB stick made with our ISO burnt onto it, we're ready to go ahead and put it on an old laptop. So this old laptop I'm using was built for Windows Vista, it looks like. It has an Intel Centrino processor. So let's see exactly how well that functions. We'll power it up. Hit escape to get into the boot menu. Hit F9. Do USB. And now we can see we have our um, Ubuntu logo at the bottom and it's getting ready to load. This might take a bit depending on how old your system is and how fast the write speed of your USB bus is. And there we go. It's beginning to load. So what, what happens is it will load a basic uh, Ubuntu OS and give you the opportunity to install it to the hard drive at that time. And that's what we have going on here. So you'll notice it says that we have Wi-Fi networks available. The first thing I want to do is connect to my Wi-Fi so I can download updates as I'm going through. Alright, if I hit try Ubuntu, it would just let me use it based off of uh, running it off of the USB key. But since we're going to put RetroPie on this, we're going to actually install it. So let's choose that option. We're going to download updates and install third party drivers. And again, uh, 
it may take a while depending on the type of system you're putting it on. This is a really slow system. I'm not sure exactly how long it's going to take, but we'll hang in there and find out. Gives us a couple of options here. This machine had Windows 7 on it. We're going to blow that away and erase the disk and install Ubuntu. Tells us that we're out of luck if we want to try to go back. So we have to just choose. Ask us our time zone. And we are in the New York time zone. Ask us our keyboard layout, which is English, US English. Here's where it's going to ask you for your name. It's going to ask you for your computer's name, and you can rename it at this point. This one's going to be RetroPi3. Picking a username. We'll leave it at Chris. Choosing a password. Nothing too complicated for this particular install. I'm going to choose for it to log in automatically so that way we don't have to put our password in as it boots up. Then we'll hit continue. So now it's uh, copying files. The installation is now complete. What we want to do next is restart the system. You don't want to remove your USB key at this time. All right, now we can remove it and hit enter. Auto login seems to have worked. Uh, comes up and gives you a list of keyboard shortcuts that you're not going to remember. You'll have to learn over and over again. But we'll go join our Wi Fi network again. We're on our Wi-Fi network. So now we're ready to install RetroPie. We're going to pop up in Firefox. We're going to do a quick search for RetroPie. And we're going to go to and we're going to go to retropie.org.uk. From here, we're going to go to download. We're going to scroll to the Debian Ubuntu on PC and click on this. And then we're going to get some instruction. So this is where it gets interesting. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy these commands one at a time. And we're going to paste them into terminal. And since we're going to be using terminal quite a bit, we're going to pin it. I'll lock it to the launcher. So you want to right click and paste that first command. It's going to ask us for our password. And it'll start pulling down our software. I'm going to hit yes to continue. This will take a while depending on your internet connection. Okay, now that part's complete, we're going to go grab the second command. We're 
going to drop it over into terminal. And if you'll notice it says that the uh, program GIT is not currently installed. We can install it by typing sudo apt tells how much space it's going to take. We continue. This installs fairly quickly. Now we're going to paste our command back in. Okay, so RetroPy setup is now done. We're going to go back, change our directory into the RetroPy setup directory with this command. We're in the directory now and we're going to run the setup with this command. Now that the RetroPy setup is running, hit OK. And we're going to do the basic install. We're going to hit OK. And yes. And then we wait again. Once the basic install is complete, you'll go back to this screen and then you'll need to perform a reboot, which is R, and then you just hit OK. Once your machine reboots, you're ready to fire up RetroPie for the first time. So you're going to click on the dash, type in RPIE, click the icon. The first thing you'll be shown is a chance to configure your input. If you have a controller put in, and I have this Xbox One controller connected by USB. So to configure it, just hold down the A button. Then it will come up and give you all of the options that are available for this pad. So you just start there at the highlighted line. And we'll do D-pad up, down, left, right. Start, select, A, B, X, Y left shoulder, right shoulder, left trigger. If you'll notice it jumped past to right thumb. For some reason I have an issue with this particular controller. That happens. Don't use the left uh, thumb button so it's not the end of the world. I'll hit the right thumb. Go left analog up, down, left, right. Right analog up, down, left, right. Then we're finished. You just hit the A button. and hit B to go back to the menu and we're in. Now we're going to exit and load a game. I've already got a game downloaded. I'm going to extract it. I'm going to copy this ROM. It'll go in your home, RetroPie, ROMs folder of the system that you're using. This one's for NES. We'll paste it in here. Relaunch RetroPie. And now you'll notice we have Nintendo Entertainment System. We'll go into that. There's our game that we loaded. Start it up. Well that's all there is to this. It takes about two hours depending on what type of hardware that you're running it on. But if you have an older laptop or desktop laying around and you'd like something good to emulate uh, 
N64 or now that Dolphin is included with RetroPie on Ubuntu, uh, that would be GameCube, Wii, that type of thing. Um, it's great to have this hardware on a computer. I know we all mostly got started with the uh, Raspberry Pi, and that's great, it has its own advantages, but beefier hardware helps you run the more modern ROMs. So if you have any questions, be sure and leave them in the comments. If you'd like to see us do a video relating to anything else along these lines, be sure and ask. But we appreciate your time, and don't forget to subscribe.